Hello and welcome to Share Talk. I'm Bonnie Hughes. Our very interesting guest today is Legendary Investments. They invest in small startups and small companies in order to generate asymmetric returns for investors. Last year, they generated a profit of 248,000 pounds. Here to tell us about the company and what they're up to is Zafar Karim, Executive Chairman. Hello, Zafar, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, uh, Bonnie. So, um, Legendary. So the idea behind Legendary Investments is really to provide public market investors access to opportunities in the private market. A lot of public market investors bemoan that they can only get in after the IPO, where there are returns to be had, but they're typically lower than the returns if you are able to get in before the IPO. And essentially that's what we do. So it gives our investors in Legendary um, the uh, possibility to generate substantially higher returns than they might if we were just in the public market. Because access to private companies, absolutely most general investors do not have access to absolutely. invest in public absolutely. In private companies. Yeah. Um, what we do is we don't just invest in any old private companies. We basically look for startups and then we nurture them. We pride our expertise, our experience, our contacts. We've been doing this for almost two decades, so we have um, quite a lot of experience and a track record. Um, what we found is private companies that are good companies have all the ingredients of excellence. To, become, um, to actually become from good to excellent, they generally need two other things. One is credibility and the other is big thinking. Big thinking is about being able to work on the company rather than in the company and credibility is becoming safe to buy from. At Legendary, we're able to do both. The listed platform gives them the credibility, and us working very proactively with the companies gives them all the other bits and pieces. And so we maximize the chance of those good companies becoming excellent companies. And is your main form of investment uh, on an equity side, or do you also equity. do debt? Yes, OK. Equity. We don't take debt. We only invest in the equity, because that's where the largest upside is. Yes, that's very true. In terms of how we run the company, we like to think we're extremely prudent. Uh, our rewards as directors are aligned and we're conservative. So to give you an idea, since we took over the company seven years ago, when it was a shell, we raised about two and a half million pounds after costs. The company had negative net assets then. For seven years, most AIM companies would not be able to survive on two and a half million pounds. We've not just only survived, paid all the fees for nomads and everything else, um, but we've managed to grow negative net assets of 100,000 to approaching 6 million. And so is there a small team in your company? It's a very small team. There's myself and my director, and then we use a network of people. Even for us, what we do is we pay ourselves way under market salaries, but our remuneration is in options. So if the shares do well, we'll do well. And our sh options are always struck at, um, out of the money. So when the share price was 0.1, we issued options strike at point two. So that shows your interests are aligned with the Absolutely shareholders aligned. and the investors. Yeah. The other thing is we're very conservative in terms of how we book numbers into the balance sheet. So, so in, we're allowed to use three different methods for booking our investments. There's a, what I call an optimistic, a medium, and the most conservative method. The most conservative is backward looking. So for example, what we do is if we take an investment, we take the cost of the investment or the last time somebody bought a stake in the investment as the value. If since then the investment has hit more milestones, we do not mark it up. Mm. So it's a very conservative backward looking valuation. And even with that, we've taken the negative net asset value, raised two and a half million in seven years, made it appro approaching six million. So can you give us some indication of um, some of the investments yeah, sure. that you've had? So in terms of track record, virtual stock is the principal investment that people focus on. That's because it's been, by some way, our most successful investment. It's a cloud-based SaaS business that focuses on integration, and it's supplying it to the retail sector and the national health sector. The integration market is a half a trillion dollar market. And um, we identified this company in early uh, 2012. Uh, we did a lot of work with them to really understand them. And then in two, October 2012, we invested at a valuation of Two million. Last year, a VC invested at a valuation of 66 million. Wow. That's a 33 times return. And the next step for this company is still private, so the only way to access it is through Legendary. You can buy Legendary shares. Um, or that. Uh, when the VC made the uh, investment at 66 million, uh, the CEO said that um, 
they want to list within the next 18 months, possibly on NASDAQ. Now, to put this into perspective, there's a company in, um, in uh, the West Coast called MuleSoft. They also focus on the integration market. Last month, they were bought out by Salesforce.com for $6.5 billion. Wow, that's quite an so upside. So $2 million, $66 million. If this lists for a billion, we'll have um, got into an investment right at the early stage that has gone up in value 500 times. Not five times, not 10 times, not 20 times, 500 times. The, so this provides an opportunity for shareholders to, to get exposure to this investment. Because they wouldn't otherwise be able to. Absolutely. And the investment now has Tesco's. When we were involved, it was a couple of hundred thousand turnover. It had small clients. It now you know, has a roll call of companies that um, uh, any FTSE 100 would be glad to call clients. Last year, an analyst did a research report on this company on an IPO basis and valued it at $237 million. We're holding on our books at $66 million valuation backward-looking, conservative. Very good. And so um, you have another uh, sort of platform that you just yeah. invested in. So um, IBS is another one which we think could be very large. IBS is a banking services platform uh, based out of New Zealand. There's some unique opportunities in the New Zealand market for what IBS is trying to do. Legendary got in at the outset at nominal value, so you know when the company was being established. And then the first step was to apply for um, the licenses, the authorities to operate. Now, these things are very difficult and time-consuming to obtain. But the, our application and the responses that we got back from the regulator were so encouraging that the investors that put up the seed converted their seed capital into equity at a valuation of $10 million. So we went from nominal to a $10 million valuation in three months. That's now, great. Now, we are... Uh, we are actually holding this on our books at nominal. Uh, for our year-end accounts, which are March, we'll be holding it at 10 million valuation. Um, but since then, this week, the authorities to operate were granted. That's you know the equivalent of getting the license to do your business. The license was very difficult to get. But we will still be holding at the 10 million valuation until another transaction occurs. Again, conservative. But if you look at the value that's been generated, it's massive. Now, most investment trusts usually trade um, at a discount to their net yep. asset value. Is that the case with yours as well? Well, we've actually never traded at a discount to our net asset value, except twice. Uh, there's a slide on this later on. But the first time that happened, within a couple of um, uh, weeks, uh, a couple of months, our share price had uh, risen uh, by four times. And now we're trading at a, a discount to net asset value again. Um, and almost at the same price we were when we were trading at discount and the asset value before. But the point is the company and its underlying investments are much stronger. So That provides a very good opportunity for I, investors. I expect a bounce. Now the question is how much it will be. Because um, the, the other thing is we're not like an investment trust as such. Investment trusts are generally passive. You buy, they buy shares on listed markets that other investors can get. We give you access to things you can't get and then we work with those things to make them better. So there's added value in that as well. So if, if you look at the next slide. Um, then, all right, yeah, so here so, we go. So here we go. We were at a discount to net asset value. Within a couple of months, we jumped up. We're at a discount again. But if you look at our net asset value, it's much higher than it was at that point. So one would expect we'd jump up again. If we've been guilty of one thing, it's because we've focused a lot on the company and not increasing the awareness about the company. Um, and, you know, we're going to start focusing more on that now so more investors realize what we're doing, see our track record, see our business model. And the other thing is, because some of our investments are doing so well, uh, once they crystallize, list, etc., uh, as well as the share price going up being a return, we'll look at doing share buybacks or potentially dividends or even in-specie dividends where we'll dividend out shares because it's all about the shareholders at the yes, end of the day. Yes, exactly. And do you have other opportunities that you're looking at in the pipeline? Oh, yeah. So we typically see a, approaching 100 opportunities a year. Now, that may seem like a lot, but a lot of them can be rejected within yes. you know, 10 minutes or half an hour or so. We've only made 12 investments so far. Uh, we've exited five. We have seven on the books. Um, we are seeing some very interesting opportunities in the... In the um, uh, media and data space, we're seeing some very interesting opportunities in IT, uh, in artificial intelligence. Yeah, we don't have a shortage of opportunities. We have a shortage of 
uh, resources to assess them and invest in them. And I see too you also look a bit at the resource, natural resources. Sure. The, re the reason for this is people say hey, you're in IT and you're in resources, what's the connection? And the connection is this, that these companies are fairly binary, they're asymmetric. So if you invest in a resource company and the license proves valuable, the value goes from this to this. It's binary. But at the outset, which normal investors wouldn't have a chance to get in. You only put in this much money. They normally put in the money once yes. it's gone up there and they list. Similarly with IT type companies, technology type companies, it's binary. If their technology works, if it's commercialized properly, if it's taken up, you get this. And, and what we try and do is get in at this level, whereas most investors will get a chance to get in at that level once it's listed. And that's the exposure we provide. So it's not the sector, it's is there a chance for this kind of asymmetric return. And I guess is um, management is one of your most important criteria yep. in evaluating a company? Yep. Oh no, absolutely. We believe that you can have a good company if you have bad management, no good. You can have a bad company if you have good management, you'll be okay. We spend a lot of time with management to make sure that we think they're capable, we think they've got sufficient ambition. You can have a startup company, and if once the management start making half a million, they'll go to sleep. We want to make sure they have a much bigger vision than that. If they don't, we give them that vision, see if they take it on. We want to make sure they're responsive to us, uh, that they'll take our guidance. You know, they don't have to, but they'll take our guidance. Management are absolutely key. Um, you don't want someone who, I'll set up this company, I'll pay off the mortgage. You don't want someone, I'll set up this company, I'll buy a mansion and a stable of cars and you want someone who I'll set up this company I'll list it and it'll become worth a hundred million a billion etc a potential Tesla <laughs> well um, VS could you know VS we got in at two million Mule software was taken out at 6.5 billion Tesla is worth more than that but you know um, it's that it's that kind of thing we go for and so can um, investors expect some news flow on some of the companies in, in your portfolio well, we put out news whenever there's uh, something uh, significant to say. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on. If you asked me uh, t two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I would have said, look, we're near the end of the process with the license for IBS, but we don't know if it's going to be issued or when it's going to be issued. But we're you know, fairly confident that it will be issued, but you never know. I had no idea it was going to be issued on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we have an investment in an ONG company, Circle or Number 2, I call it. Um, they're going through various things at the moment, and their intention is to list before the end of the year. Between that process, uh, between the listing and now, I expect there's going to be some news. Um, uh, uh, virtual stock is going from strength to strength to strength. When it does small things now, we don't announce it. It's only when it does big things. The latest big thing was Win Canton. Know, winning business with partnering with the largest logistics supply in the country is no mean feat. And yet, five years ago when we got involved, two million valuation. That's excellent. Well, thank you very much for joining us and it's a very interesting story and we look forward to seeing more of your investments appreciate and grow um, as they develop. Thank you everyone for joining us on Share Talk. Please have a very profitable day.